Good morning to you all. How do I conquer press biopia in my practice? That's what I'll be talking about today. Press biopia is one of my favorite topics for the last four to five years. And let me tell you why it is my favorite. Let's go back to two, around uh, four to five years back, somewhere around 2013 or 2014. At that time, I had just crossed 40, and I was very used to hearing compliments like, Doctor, you've achieved so much at such a young age. Now, young age, note that. Whenever I heard that, I was very happy. I just kept quiet and smiled, because I wanted to continue, let them continue to assume that I'm young. But then, uh, press biopia is something which, we all, which none of us can escape. And uh, just when I crossed 40, I had these glasses made, because I required them. Now, suddenly my life changed, because I was no longer looking young, which I was happy about. Now, whenever I had to read anything, I had to be fumbling in my pockets or in my bag, trying to find my glasses. And I started connecting with those patients who had been coming to me with early press biopia. They used to come with vague complaints like, uh, I cannot see for near and I cannot see for distance. I have to continuously blink my eyes. I have to put lots of splashes of water on the eye. Till now, all these complaints appeared vague, but now they appeared genuine. And I realized that press biopia is not just about looking old. Press biopia is also a very cumbersome and a tedious process. And that made me realize that there was one segment of patient, somewhere between 40 to 55 years of age, which we were neglecting. And if we can provide treatment and solutions to this subset of patients, we would have a new segment of patients added to our practice. It was around that time only I was trying to buy a LASIK machine. And I heard from somewhere that Bosch and Lom is coming out with some TNO machine which has got a press by LASIK called Supracore. So I called them and I asked them about Supracore. In a very low tone, they said, Yes, madam, we have Supracore, a press by LASIK in our machine. And in a very high tone, they said, But this machine has got a very advanced Zyoptics and this has got very improved results. It has a combined workstation with uh, some OpScan as well as Zywave. Again, I prompted them back into Supracore. I said, Does it have a Supracore? So they, they said, again in a low tone, Yes, it has a press by LASIK. I realized that even the company is not sure about this press by LASIK. But I always like to do things differently and I always like to take challenges. So I decided I am to, I'm going to go ahead with this. Even if they are not convinced, I want to add a new segment of patients to my practice. And because nobody around me is doing press by LASIK, or very few may be doing, I may not be aware. So this would be a new segment that would be added and would add revenue to my practice as well as a new a set of patients. So that's how my journey began. So in today's date, uh, the criteria that I use is lenticular changes. If there are no lenticular changes, I would go in for a press by LASIK. If there are lenticular changes, I would go in for a FACO with either a multifocal lens or a trifocal lens or an extended depth of focus lens. Of course, all these patients should have realistic expectations. Now, what is this supra code that I've been talking about? I'll just talk about it briefly because another speaker will talk about it uh, subsequently. In supra core, uh, we uh, treat the cornea. In the center, three millimeters, we leave a bump, and this three millimeters works for near. And from three to six millimeters is the area which works for distance, and in between, there is a smooth transition zone. Now, since this transition zone is smooth, there are no cases of glare or halos that we have seen till now and there is a good contrast also. But there is a flip side to this procedure. There is a slight impact, obviously, on distance vision, because the central three millimeters is also, through the central three millimeters, uh, the patient is also viewing for distance. So we always tell the patient that you will have slight loss of your distance vision. And secondly, it's a temporary measure. So initially, I started with 40 to 55 years of age group because it can correct up to a maximum of two diopters. And I always told them that it will correct up to two diopters. So you will have a kind of spectacle independent life for a few years, and later you may need glasses. But now I, 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 I do this procedure even on patients who are more than 55 up to 65 if they do not have any lenticular changes. Because if somebody has a power of three, and we've already corrected two, then what they are left with is just a power of one. So at 60 or 65, if you have a power of one and you're kind of independent of glasses, that's what better could you ask for. 
So uh, this is an evaluation of 122 patients, but basically what I want to highlight here is that there is a one-line drop in significant number of patients when we do a supracore, and there is a two-line drop in few patients, but when we see binocularly, this one-line drop is not very significant and patients are happy. There were dissatisfied patients, of course. Uh, uh, the causes of dissatisfaction I've enumerated here. There can be an off-target refractive outcome as it, as it happens in any LASIK. There can be insufficient supracore effect. There can be a poor distance vision. There can be a regression. And there can be visual disturbances and difficulty in adjusting to the monovision uh, effect. The good news is that there is a remedy for all these dissatisfied patients because it's a corneal-based procedure. Two patients, I needed to do a refractive enhancement, in which I did a LASIK uh, touch-up, just, just like we follow any LASIK protocol. And these patients were satisfied after that. Supracore enhancement has been done by Rob, Dr. Robert Ang, who was the first one to start Supracore in Philippines. And he says he has satisfied patients after this. And he has done a reversal in one case. And reversal is also possible, which means that you have a bump. You can just shave off that bump. And it becomes something like a monofocal profile. Uh, whenever we talk of cornea, there's a talk of aberrations, and we are now analyzing how, how much is the change in aberrations after supracore. There is a, some change in aberrations, but this we have not, this has, we have found to be not correlating with the subjective changes, with the subjective responses. Now let's come to patients who have lenticular changes. Now we have these options, trifocals, extended depth of focus lenses, and multifocal lenses. Now, again, how did I start my journey of trifocals, multifocals we have all have been doing for a long time. So I had a patient who was an Anglo-Indian, there was an Anglo-Indian couple who came to me, and the patient has had a cataract in both eyes with a less than 660 vision, very fussy patient and very apprehensive patient. Nobody was ready to touch that patient. But that patient, uh, but I felt sad for the patient because he has a less than 660 vision. He has a, he's an educated person. His wife is so nice. So I decided to go ahead, go ahead with the procedure. And I decided to do my first trifocal on this patient because, I, as I said, I like to take challenges. Uh, this patient uh, uh, was very apprehensive. So instead of topical anesthesia, I did a block surgery. Next day, when uh, the bandage was opening, uh, I suddenly noticed that the wife was looking very different. She had come all dressed up with a lot of makeup and all, and I could hardly could recognize her. Probably her husband had not seen her for so long, so she was very excited that today, after many years, my husband will see me. So she was standing just next to, next to me, which became kind of an intermediate kind of a vision. So as soon as the bandage opened, she was smiling at him. He looked at her, and he said, my goodness, you developed so many wrinkles on your face. <laughs> and the expression on the wife's face, I was happy when I heard this, and she was so sad. But that made me believe, OK, these lenses are working. So uh, I wanted to understand what these trifocal lenses are. Dr. Damien Gatinel is sitting, I think, somewhere here. I can't see. Uh, I read one of his articles, and all my concepts became clear. So uh, I want to share some of it with you. Uh, because that helps in deciding the type of lens that you use. Uh, this is a bifocal profile. In this, if we adjust the step height, this is how we can control the amount of light which is diffracted, diffracted in various foci. That is how much will go for distance and how much will go for near. And if we adjust the spacing or the width of the steps, then we can control what is the near power. So anything can be customized. Now, what is a trifocal lens? In a trifocal lens, uh, the top profile, consider these two diffractive elements. The top one is, has a power of plus 3.33. And the bottom one has a power of uh, 1.66. And when you combine these two profiles, it becomes a trifocal profile. So it's that simple. That's what I understa understood from his article. And suddenly I thought, OK, now I know what it is. And so all your commercially available lenses have uh, this kind of a profile. They are a mix and match of this kind of profile. And they have some variations in between them. And uh, these are the three commercially available ones, Ateliza, uh, Fine Vision, uh, Fine Vision Physiol and Panoptics, which has just come up. Dr. Kudlu is also sitting here. I think he's the first one to implant it in India, and he's posted it all over. So we'll be happy to hear what he has to say today. But from what I understood from Panoptics, just one slide, Dr. Kudlu, is that instead of uh, two steps, there are three step heights. Hmm. The? 
Okay. So I think he'll be a better person to talk about it, so I'll just leave it. So, but basically what I want to say here is that all these lenses have a different mix and match. Something works better, so all these will work for, uh, at 40 centimeters for near, uh, and they will, uh, uh, so at 40 centimeters for near, and at, at 80 centimeters for intermediate vision. But by changing these step heights, you can actually change this 80 centimeters or to also to 60 centimeters. Now, this is there in, I think, panoptics, that they change it to 60 centimeters, because many patients may be happier at 60 centimeters. And that 120 centimeters, which they had split, they uh, redistributed to distance for a better vision. That's what, um, because since this is the most upcoming lens, this is something which we all need to know about. Uh, then there may be patients who want uh, a good intermediate vision, who want a good intermediate vision, and they are happy with, a, uh, with not so good near vision. And for them, we have the extended depth of focus lenses. And especially those who are driving at night and they do not want to be disturbed with glare, halos, and want a good contrast also. So you can choose. What I mean to say is you can choose as per the need. If a patient wants near at 40, uh, intermediate at 80 and uh, and you want a distance vision uh, then it can be 80 Lisa or Physiol. If, if the patient wants uh, near at 40, intermediate at 60 and a distance vision it can be panoptics. If the patient wants distance and intermediate then it is an extended depth of focus and if the patient wants distance and near and is happy not to have intermediate it, you can even consider multifocals. So the choice has to be as per the need of the patient. And we have so many choices. We are lucky to have so many choices. At every distance, you can give him a different type of a lens. So that way, I feel press biopia is undergoing a continuous revolution. And here, I would end by saying that press biopia is the next big thing. Rather, it is already a big thing today. And, uh, and it, it, it definitely deserves attention because it's not only going to help our patients, but it's also going to help us. Probably by next year, I would get rid of these glasses, which I have to always hang here. Thank you.